Hi guys, greetings from Explanator. Today's video is going to be on thyristor commutation. That is, different ways in which you can turn off a thyristor. Because once you turn on a thyristor, you can't turn it off as gate loses its control. So there is no off switch. Hence, you have to use external means to turn it off. Basically, there are two broad classifications based on the type of power supply used. If you use DC supply, it is called as forced commutation. And if you use AC supply, it is called as natural commutation. Under forced commutation, there are five types. Class A, Class B, Class C, Class D and Class E. Under natural commutation, there comes Class F. We will study class B circuit for thyristor commutation today. A class B circuit looks like that in the figure with a DC supply, series LC circuit, a diode and two thyristors T1 and TA. T1 is the working thyristor and TA is the auxiliary thyristor. Before starting the circuit analysis, we make two assumptions. One, load current is constant and two LC circuit is resonating in nature. Now this circuit has supporting waveforms and it would be lengthy to explain both in one video. Hence this video will be split into two parts to explain the circuit and associated graph separately. So let's begin. Initially both the thyristors are switched off. A thyristor when it conducts acts like a closed switch and when it does not conduct it acts like an open switch. So we show T1 and TA with open switch. The current from the battery has one part to travel that is battery, capacitor, inductor, diode, load and back to battery. Once capacitor voltage equals battery voltage current stops flowing and diode turns off. The capacitor has no path to discharge, hence it holds on to the voltage Vs. Next, we fire the thyristor T1. The thyristor when conducts acts like a closed switch, so load current will flow from battery, thyristor, load and back to battery. The capacitor cannot discharge as it has no path through TA nor T1 because battery voltage and capacitor voltage have equal magnitudes and opposite polarities. Next step, we fire thyristor TA. Now the capacitor current shown in green has a path to discharge via TA and inductor. This current is also called as resonating current. With TA acting like a closed switch, it is a series LC circuit. The capacitor will go from voltage Vs to 0 to minus Vs. A video on how series LC circuit behaves with a DC battery has already been done. Do check it out in the link given in description below. So the capacitor charges to a value minus Vs. The right hand plate of the capacitor is now positive. This voltage reverse biases the auxiliary thyristor and therefore switches it off. And resonating current stops flowing in the circuit. The capacitor voltage forward biases the diode. Note that till now diode was reverse biased as right hand plate of the capacitor was negative. Once the diode has been forward biased, the resonating current that is capacitor current has a path to discharge. It takes the path of least resistance and avoids going via the load. It builds up in magnitude as it flows through the thyristor, opposing the load current flowing through the thyristor T1. As the difference between the load current and resonating current reduces to zero, T1 turns off. So that section of the branch is cut off. 
Now the load current has to take the path via capacitor, inductor, diode, load and back to DC supply. Load current will fall to zero once capacitor voltage equals battery voltage and the diode gets reverse biased. If you notice, this is the same state as step 1. In some articles, you may come across a third assumption that says capacitor is initially charged to a voltage Vs. That is pretty much clear how it happens. As the thyristor T1 is commutated by a gradual buildup of resonant current in the negative direction, this method is also called as current commutation or resonant pulse commutation. So that was about the working of class B commutation circuit. In the next video, we shall plot the graphs for the same circuit. Until then, like, share and subscribe to Explanator because every solution has a simple explanation.